Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Donnie here with another installment in my classic TV Spotlight series. Uh, this is my second attempt uh, recording this video because um, I had some audio issues on the on the last one, so hopefully I got the thing straightened out. So today I'm going to be talking about a show that I am not exactly the target audience for. Now, granted, all these shows that I talk about all came out before I was born, so I don't think I'm the target audience for any of them, but this one in particular, it's kind of a more feminine, uh, female-centric uh, show, but it was a show that I just watched and came to enjoy, and I've never been one to adhere to stereotypes, if it's, if it's a show that I like, if it's a sitcom that's funny, I'll watch it and, and like it, and this one has, uh, definitely falls in that category, uh, it was a, um, it's a show called That Girl. It was a sitcom that aired on ABC for five years, uh, five seasons from 1966 to 71. It starred Marlo Thomas, uh, who's the daughter of legendary Danny Thomas, as That Girl. She play, uh, she plays an aspiring actress named Anne Marie. Uh, Marie is actually her last name. And she's living in New York and trying to make it big. So she does kind of anything to get noticed. She does a lot. Of, she goes on auditions, and does a lot of commercials, and um, off-Broadway plays, and off-off-off-Broadway plays, and do little bit parts in movies and TV shows. She has a comedy act in one episode, has a, a she does modeling gigs, car shows, just a, a little bit of everything. Um, hoping to get noticed. Now, since this isn't steady work, she does a lot of other little temp jobs, and, you know, she'll, she may work as a server in one episode. She may work, um, work at a hotel. She's a seamstress at a clothing factory, a secretary, a uh, in a Christmas episode, she plays one of Santa's helpers at her department store. It was actually the first episode I ever saw. And all these little things. So this kind of was the basis for the humor in the show. That you know, And it made every episode pretty unique, that it wasn't the same thing over and over again. She's working on a different job in, one, you know, in this episode as opposed to the last. And, you know, kind of, and she's put in all these many different situations and it, um, so it leads to uh, a lot of you know funny jokes and whatnot and what and whatnot um, in fact in the first episode she's working as a clerk at a newspaper newspaper and magazine stand in a big office building and that's how she meets her boyfriend Donald Hollinger he's played by the actor De Ted Bessel and we're going to get into their relationship a little later. So, what appealed to me most about the show was just the humor. Uh, just how quick-witted and the funny dialogue. And, it, like, the dialogue was kind of one of the, the strongest suits of it. Um, yeah, you know, and Anne's... Uh, the end character is uh, she's kind of prone to these little comedic rants and monologues where she may be caught up in a situation and try to tries to explain herself and she'll go da 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 you know this big kind of convoluted response to you know explain it and it's very fun it's very endearing character um, and the banter between her and Don her and Donald is you know is great. And, well, with any char character in it, um, they go back. They go back and forth. And, uh, there was one line that really uh, stood out to me that I always found very funny. There was an, an episode where they were talking. In one scene, they're talking about uh, what they're going to have for for dinner, and she's and she asked him, "What do you think about pork chops?" Now you would expect kind of a basic response, being like, "Oh, that sounds good," or "Oh, let's think about something else," or something. Um, but his response kind of turns it on his head, and 
he says, uh, he says, pork chops as it as a meal, great, but as a tennis racket, not so much. You know, so it's kind of just this fun you know, little quippy line, and you know, it's one thing I learned in writing that every line means something. They always serve to advance the plot or provide characterization, and that may be a future topic for a, a video uh, that I might do. But I just to kind of give a sense of what kind of show it is. It kind of, if you saw my video about the Dave Van Dyke show and how much of a fan of it is that, that go really reminds me a lot of it with the same kind of a feel to it and the same kind of humor. Just sharp, quick-witted, just funny. And I was not, and, and it was not that surprising to learn that actually the creators of that girl got their start as writers in the Dick Van Dyke show. So, you know, if you're a, a fan of that, you might be a fan of that girl as well. You know, a lot of the, uh, the show is based off her, um, you know, her trying to make as an actress, but a lot of it is also based, uh, focuses on her relationship with Donna. They're kind of the two, you know, main characters, and they had a very real relationship, like they have ups and downs, those are episodes where they have arguments, and, you know, but they're very good and respectful to, to each other, and they're supportive of each other's careers, and it's very, you know, it felt like a very real relationship, and a great chemistry, and, and that, and, um, now I know it's over, uh, 50, it's over a 50 year show, but I do, um, I will give kind of a spoiler alert about their relationship, so if you don't want to hear about it, um, you can skip over this next part, and I'll put in the description what uh, uh, what parts to you know what parts you should skip over. Um, in the fifth and final season premiere, they get engaged. And you would expect, okay, the last season would all be devoted to the wedding and, and company with the final episode with them getting married. But it does not. Um, and it's not because the show got canceled or whatever. Uh, it was actually deliberately done by Marlo Thomas. Uh, she didn't want um, to end on a wedding. And she just let them engage. She said she didn't want to send uh, the wrong message to young girls that marriage was the ultimate goal and that you couldn't have a successful and fulfilling life unless you got married. So that was uh, pretty uh, progressive at the time. Okay, and then what you know, and welcome back to um, anyone who skipped over that part. Uh, so, and it was pretty um, interesting, like, how progressive the show was and how much, um, you know, Marvel Towns had control of, of the show and she wanted to put forth, you know, put forth and be, you know, a role model for it. And she, like, fought with some studio execs, you know. This was a... A kind of a groundbreaking show that it was one of the first shows to focus on a young single woman at the time that until then uh, single women characters were either daughters in a family sitcom or a domestic like a maid for a family and you know this was one of the first uh this now and you could see like what did the um you know how this kind of laid the foundation for shows to follow, you know, without that girl, would there have ever been like a Mary Tyler Moore show or Murphy Brown or Riley McBeal, whatever, whatever. So it shows, uh, it's like a, a, a huge influence on, on TV history. Mm -hmm. granted, um, that girl didn't really delve into, you know, serious topics or topics of the day. Like if you saw my episode, video about the, the rural purge and, and uh, how a lot of shows um, how a lot of shows that came to follow were you know dealt with issues but you know this didn't really have so much but you know just the basis of the show was very uh, progressive um, but 
one final thing about that girl is uh, it's kind of the calling card of the show. Uh, it, the game, what it was most known for, it was known for its cold openings, which never heard of a cold opening. It's, a, it's typically a scene in a television show that comes before the opening credits. It's like an opening introduction scene, and, and that, and every episode of that girl had had one of these, and it would have, and it would always end in the same the same way, where someone would point to Anne. Or and sometimes a picture of Anne, or sometimes she'd point to herself, and they would say, that girl. And then it'd go into the opening credits. You know, in the beginning, it's a funny little thing, and it's been parodied on numerous uh, things, like Saturday Night Live, and The Nanny, and other, sh other shows that parodied it. And, um, so it's another little funny little thing, and it's always it's kind of like a Hitchcock cameo. It's like you always watch it to see, like, what... You know who's gonna point at Anne, and what you know, and what are they gonna say? Like, like in one episode, she was getting, uh, she was in court, uh, getting sued, and that was the whole, you know, basis of the whole episode. And the, and the um, plaintiff point, you know, points at her and says, like, when they ask, like, who's the defendant, he points at her and says, that girl, and it, it, we're always coming at with her, like. A freeze frame on, on her face and she makes kind of a funny or shocked face so if I have a final message about that girl is like you know it's a show that I was surprised that I you know enjoyed because you know it's like I said it's not a very a masculine show but I just you know but it's okay like what you like you know don't give in the stereotypes if there's something that, you know you don't have to be embarrassed about what you like and what kind of a show, you know, what kind of shows, movies, music, whatever. Uh, so just, you know, don't be judgmental. Uh, so that is it. I'm going to be wrapping it up now. Um, you know, like, comment, subscribe, you know, the works. Um, I'm always open for new um, suggestions if there's a show or movie or event you want me to talk about in a future video leave me a comment and I'll see if I can do that um, thank you for watching and until next time take it easy